And hey everyone, um, how's things? Uh, it's always a little bit odd doing uh, this sort of a thing on my own. Normally I'd have uh, Cliff Aegis, Maria and Anastasia Mustaka with me. Um, but yeah, this is a special festive tech calendar um, event where I'll be talking about uh, home automation with the Azure Percept. Um, so I always like talking about this. It's quite a fun talk and uh, I don't actually have to do any coding, uh, which is nice. Uh, mostly demos and not a huge amount of slides. So um, yeah, uh, I've just come off of the uh, the kickoff stream as well, so I've had just a few minutes to to make sure everything's all up and running, and I think it's okay. But we can uh, we can deal with it. It's a live uh, event, so things are bound to go wrong. Uh, so if I switch across to my screen share, uh, then I can kick off with the slides. So if I talk uh, a little bit about me first, if if you've not um, joined this stream before, then. Uh, I'm Pete Gallagher. I'm a, an IoT consultant. Um, I do work all over the world, actually, um, from uh, you know places in Africa to to here in the UK. So uh, I, I like to keep myself busy with that. Uh, I'm also uh, an Azure I'm MVP. Um, so I love um, the, the Microsoft stack generally, um, but yeah, working in Azure is uh, a great a great place to work. Um, I'm also a Pluralsight author and a meetup organiser and a STEM ambassador uh, and uh, I particularly like uh, the STEM ambassador side of what I do uh, as well as um, when we go back to um, the, the before times, running a code club as well um, but I've got two little girls at home so uh, making sure that the, um, uh, the opportunities are there for them to be able to explore STEM and, um, and give them all the opportunities that they can is very important to me. So uh, moving on a little bit, um, we'll be talking today about uh, the Azure Percept mainly and all of the parts that go up to make that. So what is the Azure Percept? Well, it's um, Microsoft's um, uh, foray into the, the world of the hardware for AI at the edge, essentially. Uh, and it's made up of uh, a few component parts. Um, it's driven by the carrier board in the middle, which is the brains of the operation. Uh, and then there's a vision module as well. And there's an also an optional audio module. Um, and each of these form the overall solution to be able to uh, give us AI at the edge um, uh, workloads. Uh, as far as the hardware is concerned, I'll not dig too deep into a lot of this, but um, it's got quite a beefy processor in there. So uh, this is going to be more powerful than something like a Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is designed specifically for AI at the edge workloads. So um, it's a decent piece of kit. Um, it's running Microsoft's own branch uh, of Linux called CBR Mariner as well. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, we're running Azure IoT Edge, uh, where, which is where these workloads are living and a lot of the, 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 the heavy lifting is done by that. Uh, and then underpinning that is Percept Studio, um, which is a, a joined up way of thinking about all of the different software parts that go into work with the hardware that we've got here. <coughs> Uh, the vision module that I mentioned earlier, um, uh, this is a, a pretty decent camera, uh, so um, an 8 megapixel camera at 30 frames a second, which is nice. Uh, it's got a nice wide uh, field of view as well, um, which is quite handy, um, and uh, that relies on custom vision. I'll talk about the software elements shortly. And then finally, the audio module. So this has got um, four um, microphones in an array to be able to listen to uh, to what we're doing. Um, it's it's based on speech, really. So this isn't for listening to uh, to sounds and discerning what sounds are. This is for converting your 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 voice into text and likewise uh, text back into voice as well. So um, yeah, there's um, uh, a few bits and that that's that lives with speech services and Azure Speech Studio as well. So as far as the uh, the um, uh, software components are concerned, a lot of this is underpinned by Azure IoT Hub uh, and IoT Edge. And what that is, IoT Hub is um, a service that lives in Azure, essentially at the edge of Azure, that allows all of your IoT devices to communicate with the rest of the services in Azure. It's a highly available service, so you can have millions of devices connected to the IoT Hub, all communicating at the same time, and they'll never get a busy tone. It'll just work. Um, and then IoT Edge, is a service which runs on, on Linux, but also um, uh, eFlow on Windows, uh, that allows you to be able to run essentially Docker containers down on edge devices. 
uh, and that Edge runtime itself has a, an IoT hub, so it communicates with other uh, IoT devices that are connected to it. Uh, but you run these Docker containers with your individual uh, pieces of code in there, your workloads. Um, and then um, the Percept in this case is running the AI stuff in these Docker containers. So um, as far as the speech side is concerned, we've got sp the speech services uh, of things like Lewis, um, uh, language understanding um, and intelligence service, uh, and then speech studio for us to be able to create the projects uh, that we work with to understand the speech. And then finally, we've got custom vision, which is what the vision side is um, is leveraging to be able to um, uh, so we can train it to understand the world around it and see these uh, objects in it and, and, and do things with it. Uh, and that's almost all of the slides for now. So um, I'm going to switch over. I'm going to show you some of these things in action. So if I go to my next tab, uh, then now we've got um, Speech Studio uh, sitting here. And I'm, I'm just going to double check just while we're partway through the stream just to make sure that uh, my mic is working. And it looks like it is. So that's good. Um, and uh, thanks to everybody there in the chat. Obviously, uh, do shout out if, if I'm not loud enough or, or I'm too loud or, or go too fast. Uh, this is a live session, so I'm, I'm happy to take questions in there as well. Um, uh, oh, obviously, thanks so much to, uh, to to Gregor and Richard Hooper for uh, for organising the Festive Tech Calendar, which this particular event is part of. They've done some some amazing work to, to pull all of this together. So congrats to them. Uh, audio is great. Thank you. I uh, appreciate that. Uh, FL33TCOM. Um, so yeah, all right. So I'll carry on with that. So what you can see on the screen here is Azure Percept Studio. So this is what is going to join the dots between all of these different services, so that we can then hook them up and make them work with the the Azure Percept. So uh, this is the overview page here, and and uh, you can dig into some of this to be able to get going. Um, but what's cool is if we if we click demos and tutorials, then we've got links out to various different demos. Um, and there's uh, sample um, uh, vision modules, and uh, we can create vision prototypes and vision solutions here. There's also sample applications here for people counting and vision on the edge. Um, and if we click into devices, then we get our list of devices. I've only got the one percent. Uh, I think really I do need one. Quite expensive, really, when when you look at them. Uh, you know, several hundred pounds, but um, well worth it if AI at the edge is what you're interested in doing. Uh, if I click into vision, you'll see we've got a couple of vision projects here, hammer or screwdriver, which is actually an old image classification project, and then Percept Vision 1. Uh, and I've actually got this deployed down onto the device. So if I actually switch across to um, the web stream for the Percept, so this is live, this is um, the, the stream coming directly from the Percept's uh, vision module, and I've trained it to recognize the difference between a hammer and a screwdriver. Uh, I tested this just before I came online, and uh, it wasn't all that good because I went to do, uh, give a talk in Liverpool, uh, and I retrained the model uh, while I was there, and I think maybe I've, um, I've broken some, <laughs> some of my training. But it does still work, so if I hold this hammer up uh, in the right place, then... Oh, no, no so was, that's what it was doing earlier. It was giving me a screwdriver rather than a hammer. It will give me a hammer eventually. You can do it. You can do it. Live demos. There we are. There's the hammer. There we go. You see, it does work. Uh, and then if I hold up a screwdriver, then it recognizes a screwdriver. Uh, and this is obviously just one one particular demo of some, something you can do with this. But I've seen some awesome demos where um, there was a medical environment and they had the Percept Vision looking at the tray full of medical equipment uh, and it would recognize all of the medical equipment. But what's even better is if there was a piece um, missing, it would tell you in response to a, uh, a request through the, uh, the sound module, which I thought was a really great real world uh, use of, of this technology. I really enjoyed uh, that particular demo then that was part of that uh, the Microsoft uh, uh, worldwide global hackathon recently that was really cool uh, oh hey Reese uh, if anyone uh, oh okay yep yeah, excellent uh, yeah thanks for coming along uh, yeah so um, that's that's sort of the basics of of the the vision side of things which uh, I really like that it's really cool um, so just to, to show you where this comes from uh, and you can sort of see here the um uh the the training images i was doing in the hotel to to train it to recognize hammers and screwdrivers um but essentially what you do is you can set 
uh, the, um, the, the Percept to automatically take images at regular intervals and upload them to this custom vision.ai project that you've got linked. Uh, and then what you do is you go through and you can tag parts of it to say what it is. So I've tagged that as a screwdriver, so it recognizes that. Uh, and then if I scroll down a bit further where I find a hammer, then you can see that uh, I've tagged that as a hammer. It could be as well that you've got more than one thing in there and you can tag it that way too. So in these older ones, that's a bad example. Um, I've got uh, multiple things tagged. Uh, I've got a bad example of that. But if I tick worm here, for instance, uh, then you can see I've tagged bit there and a worm and the ring light and uh, my Occhio cam and, and stuff like that as well. So um, it is quite good. And also when you start um, tagging these items, it can actually automatically tag them and then you just correct it if it's got it wrong. So it's pretty powerful. Uh, and then once you've got all your images in there, you can train it and test it directly in here. And then once you've finished training it, then you can deploy it directly to the device um, from Percept Studio, which is uh, kind of where you'd want to go uh, and do that. So that's that's how the, the vision side works. And obviously, I wanted to be able to show that, even though that's not the subject of the talk today. Um, but yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. I like that. So the other facet from uh, from this, of course, is the speech side. Uh, and there's there's two parts to speech. There's there's a wake word, so a, a little bit like uh, any other um, uh, you know, agent that you've got sitting there uh, beside you, maybe an Amazon one. Uh, there'll be a word that'll wake up your device, and then after that, it needs to listen and then uh, figure out what's called the intent of what it is you've said. So on the screen here, we've got a few different keywords. It comes baked in with computer. Weirdly, it won't let me actually choose computer from this list. It says there's not enough syllables. Syllables. It needs to be two or more. I'm pretty sure that there's two or more syllables in computer. Uh, but I, I went with controller here. Um, and actually, it's probably going to listen to me now when I've said that. Oh, no, it's not. No, amazing. That's good. Um, uh, well, unless it's not working properly, and then that's bad. Um, but it might be that I need to um, uh, tell it to use controller again. I'm looking down, see if it's going to start. Uh, actually, what I can do is if I switch across, then we can actually see um, what I'm talking about here. So um, spin that out just a little bit. There you go. So you can see here's the, the carrier board, and then that's the vision module, uh, and then the audio module there, and I've just got some speakers plugged into that for the audio feedback you get from the uh, the sound module as well. Further on from that, I've got a Raspberry Pi you can just see in shot. Uh, actually, it's connected to a robot arm, which is for another talk. Uh, and then further away from that that you can't see, um, I've got uh, a double patris, a double main socket, and inside there I've got um, a relay and then a lamp. But I'll go th back through that. Um, uh, shortly. So you can see that working there. So on top of the keyword you use to wake it up, we've also got this, this concept of commands. Uh, and this is the project that you put together to be able to recognize your intent, the, the, the set of sentences you wanted to react to, and then how you want it to react. Uh, and I've got a demo uh, here. In fact, if you go to, to overview, and then demos and tutorials, if we scroll down, you can actually try out a, a voice assistant template, and there's a bunch of them. Uh, so hospitality, healthcare, inventory, automotive, uh, and I've deployed this hospitality one. So if I click into here, um, then uh, what we've got is a mock hotel room, and uh, we can control that mock hotel room um, using the physical percept. Now, um, I'm hoping that this is actually working, so I'm actually going to just... Um, See, see, there's computer. Look, it lets me have that. Um, I'm going to change that from computer back to controller. There we are, just so that uh, I know that that is going to work. And theoretically, I can now communicate with this. So let's just see if this works. Controller. Controller. Turn the lights on. Then we wait. Oh, it's thinking. Okay, turning all the lights on. Yeah, so it knew how to do that. And then controller, turn the lights I'm off. Not sure what oh. you meant by that. Listen then, controller, turn the lights off. Okay, turning all the lights off. And that seems to have stuck in the middle. Let me just refresh the page. 
might need to go back to my device and do it that way. Live demos. You know, who's expecting those to work first time? Uh, to get Interestingly, it took me a while to figure out how to actually get back to a voice assistant. Um, but you can uh, by doing this. So, oh, look, so they are off, look. Controller. Controller. Turn the lights on. Okay, turning all the lights on. Oh, look at it's not working. What's it doing? You can see it's working there on the left-hand side. Oh, no, there we are. Huh. It was just a little bit slow. Uh, controller, turn the television off. Controller, turn the television yeah. off. Okay, turning the TV off. Yeah, now that's working a bit better. And we can do things like set the temperature as well. So, controller, set the temperature to 70 degrees. Controller. Set the temperature to 70 degrees. Set temperature to 70. There we are. Um, and controller. Turn the AC on. AC already on. You see there that it's it's contextual here as well. So you can return information back into this um, so that it knows um, whether this particular state is set or not. So... Um, yeah, I mean, that, that works pretty well um, once you've refreshed the page. Um, but, I mean, that's great. Um, but, um, you know, it's kind of just all living in virtual land, isn't it? And what we want to do is control our own stuff. But it is really great for, for just, you know, getting you used to, to how this is working. Um, and so what we want to do, though, is is make our actual home automated with the percept. So if I go back to my slides for a minute. Uh, then I can talk you through the home automation um, uh, scenario that I've got set up here. So I've got a bunch of components uh, set up. I've got the Azure Percept audio module. Of course, the carrier board um, is in the middle of all of this, but I've simplified it. Uh, and that calls out to this speech studio, the, all the services that we're using here, including Lewis, um, uh, to be able to understand the intent of the words that it's understanding when we say them. So Speech Studio then makes a judgment uh, and calls out then using uh, a web endpoint to an Azure function that I've got set up. And then that um, looks like you're building the metaverse. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, and maybe a looking a little bit less like data from uh, Star Trek though. <laughs> uh, so I've got an Azure function that, that receives an HTTP call from, the, from Speech Studio there to trigger um, uh, a message through the same IoT hub that Percepts, the Percepts using, but I've also got a Raspberry Pi connected to that. So this is actually triggering what's called a direct method on our Raspberry Pi um, to be able to um, react to that command from um, Speech Studio. So there's a few hops to go through there, but actually none of this is is particularly complicated, and I'll show you all of the code in a bit. Uh, so once the percept, uh, once the uh, Raspberry Pi receives the direct method invocation to say what it needs to do, um, then it goes through a mains relay and out to just a desk lamp that I've got sitting in the background here. Um, and uh, there's not a great deal of code involved in all of this. So um, let us uh, do some demos of that, shall we? So if I switch back across to here, before I, I, I move on a bit further, there's, I've got the actual uh, project uh, open here that this hospitality service uses. Uh, oh, it's a version of it, but it's exactly the same. Um, and you can see here that we've got a bunch of uh, example sentences, turn the lights on, turn the lights off. Um, and so that's, that's sort of the, the basic idea there. But what I've got over here is um, uh, one that I've created specifically just to be able to turn the lights on and off. So you um, you create what's called a command, uh, and then you give it a bunch of example sentences, so all of the different ways you expect to be able to invoke that command. Um, and, and you can see that it's not as simple as just turning the lights on and off. You need to give it all the different ways. You can have a lamp or turn it on or turn the lamp on or you know switch on the lights and stuff like that. So... Um, You've got, to, you've got to make sure you cover a lot of that, and then it will figure out the intent after that. Now, you can see in green here that I've actually got on and off. In that previous example there, they, they had uh, turn the light on, turn the light off, TV on, TV off, uh, which is actually part of a demo that I did with Paul DiCarlo. 
But that's not the best um, and most efficient method. What you can do is you can create something called parameters. Uh, and so this inserts the value of that parameter. And the parameters are over here on the left-hand side. Uh, and I've created a string parameter, but you could choose from date, times, numbers, geographies, uh, you know, a few different things. Um, and then we can accept predefined input values from the internal catalog, which is then down here. So on and off are the two different states that we can set our lamp to. We could actually set one of these as a, as a default as well if we wanted to, but I mean, we don't want it guessing. We rather want it on or off. Um, and then what we've got is this completion rule, a done action. So once it's understood what it's done, then we can have it actually do something useful. And if I scroll down, you can see the action is called the web endpoint light control. And if I click into web endpoints on the left, here is that web endpoint. Uh, and when you when you create one of these, then you can create uh, a URL that it calls into, and then you can select the method that it's using. And I've chose po chosen post there. Uh, and then we can add some parameters as well, and that's just a code to be able to authenticate with the Azure function. Um, and then at that point, we're able to um, yeah, invoke our command and send it down there. So if I go back to my uh, percept and I go to speech and we go to commands and then just give that a sec and let that load all the different commands. Uh, so uh, this is the command that um, I want to, to show you today. So if I just click assign, then we can assign it to our percept. I've only got one percept there and click save. And actually, if I flick across here, if we catch it fast enough, then I think I was just a bit too slow. You, you actually see the LEDs flash on and off when it's uh, received that update. So um, it's pretty fast to be able to put that down on there. So in theory, I should be able to turn on a lamp at this point. Uh, this is the part that, uh, you know, you cross your fingers because this is a big part of the demo. But if I, um, uh, in actual fact, what I've also got, if I, if I go across here is all the code, but I'll, go, I'll, I'll give the demo first and I'll go through the code. So let's just put, let that uh, go back on the screen. So controller, turn the lights on. No, 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 come on. Controller, turn the lights on. Hey, and there we are. I, I, hopefully you can see that, but the light has come on. Uh, and in fact, controller, turn the lights off. The light has been turned off. What I'm going to do is actually, if I turn off my light, oh, well, that's easier said than done. There we go. Turn the light off and I'll turn this one off. Oh, everything's gone dark. Uh, and then I flick across to me. Oops, press the wrong button. Uh, if I flick those two switches there. Controller, turn the lights on. The lights hey, have been look, turned on. Christmas lights on. <laughs> I like that. Controller, controller, turn the lights off. The light has been turned off. Ah, there you go. So if I go back to my screen now. Uh, then we can go and have a look at the code. So uh, there's not much to it, actually. Um, this is the code that I've got running on the Raspberry Pi. So um, we've got a bunch of using statements up at the top here. Um, one of the most... Uh, hey, Johnny Chips, I see you down there. Um, one of the most important lines down here is uh, is this one here, the Azure.devices.client, and that's allowing me to be able to leverage all of the power of uh, Azure and IoT hubs in particular. Um, I've also got uh, devices.gpio down here, uh, and that's given me access to what's called the general purpose input output, or all the pins on the Raspberry Pi, which is how I'm controlling the relay in that box. Uh, so if I scroll down, we've got a connection string, and then I'm also defining the light pin, uh, and I've got that connected to pin 32 on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, there's two different uh, ways of, of communicating with the GPIO, um, the numbering schemes, in fact. Uh, we can either do um, board numbering scheme, which is the one I prefer because I can count the pins on the Pi, uh, but we can also do a BCM numbering scheme, which is referring to the uh, the controller chip. Uh, don't do that because then you're into converting between two sets of numbers. There's just no point. Uh, so scrolling down, I create an instance of a GPI, I, uh, GPIO controller and I pass in this pin numbering scheme of board. 
<laughs> Look, and now that's listening to me down there. It gets me every time that does. Uh, it'll go quiet in Would a minute. Would you like to turn the light on or off? Oh. Off. The light has been turned off. Yeah, well, okay. Um, and then I open a pin using that same uh, object just there uh, for my light pin. Uh, and I tell it that it's an output. Uh, because we're using that to turn the relay on and off. And then I set it to high. Actually, relays are a little bit backwards. So to actually activate the pin, you have to set it to low. Uh, so I want to make sure that the light's off when I start. So I set it to high just to default to off. So next up, I've got a device client. Uh, and this is actually the part that's going to con uh, connect to the Azure IoT Hub to receive the direct method that I'll, I'll show just below here. Uh, we pass in the device connection string uh, and then we're going to use MQTT, um, which is just a, a queuing protocol that we can use for communication, IoT communication. You could use AMQP or HTTPS, but I like MQTT. Uh, next up, what we do is we, we tell uh, Azure that we're waiting for this command with the set method handler async and we wait for that control light command. Um, and then into that gets passed the method request in a user context. Uh, and I, I console right line out that that's happening. Uh, and then I say spit out the data that's coming out of that method request and then deserialize it into an object. And then if the state is set to on, then I set that um, uh, relay pin to be low to activate the lamp. Otherwise, I set that to be high uh, so that the lamp's off. Um, after that, we, re we return a response uh, back to the thing that's calling the Azure function, just so that it knows it's done it. Uh, and then we just sit in a loop uh, forever, waiting for things to happen. So that's the uh, what's happening on the Raspberry Pi. To go back up the chain there, so if you remember um, over here, if we go back to the previous slide, no, spoilers, there we are. Uh, we've got the, uh, the, the lamp and the relay, and that's connected to pin 39 on the Raspberry Pi. It's, the Raspberry Pi is connected to the IoT hub, and then we've got this Azure function, which we're calling from from that Speech Studio project. So if I get the code up for that, there's not a massive amount of, of code in this either, to be perfectly honest, and a lot of it is boilerplated for you when you create an HTTP-triggered Azure function, which you can do here in, um, in Visual Studio Code. Um, so a lot of this is just given is given to you, but... I've added in the Microsoft Azure devices, so that same uh, uh, connection library for IoT hubs. Um, and then we've got this service client that I'm instantiating here, uh, and I use that uh, with this connection string to be able to connect to the IoT hub. Uh, this 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 HTTP triggered Azure function gets called into, and then I just log out the fact that it's been called into. And then we uh, we get a request body, and I stick that out onto the console, and then I, I deserialize that into an object, uh, and then uh, I stick the the state that we're passing across. Uh, and again, if I, actually if I go back to um, the Speech Studio project, um, then we go to the web endpoints, then we can go to uh, where is it? Uh, somewhere in here it actually tells you what it is it's passing out. I think it might be in the actual done over here. Um, oh, I can't remember. But it, it, we're passing in a piece of uh, JSON into the um, into that um, web endpoint to be able to um, uh, tell it whether this, the, we're telling it the light on or off. And that's actually uh, that parameter that we're, uh, we, we can see there. So that gets passed in either on or off as the state uh, not quite sure why I can't find that, but either way, it's 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 not particularly important. So if I go back to the code again, um, that state there, that's passed in from Speech Studio directly to us. We get that, uh, and then I just spit that out onto the console, and then I use this service client that I've created here, and I create it from a connection string, very similar to what the Raspberry Pi did, uh, and then I invoke that um, method down here. Um, which is the control light method. So what we do is we create a new cloud to device method uh, and we give it a timeout because, you know, that's a good thing to do. Uh, and then uh, we set that payload JSON and I just replicate the same JSON that I'm being sent, actually. I just recreate it. Uh, but we have a, a property of state and we set that to the state that's passed in, so either on or off. Uh, and then 
um, we just wait for the response and then uh, we stick that response out onto the console. So again, there's not a great deal of code. And in fact, it's mainly um, you know those three lines there and this that I've had to add to the boilerplate to get this to work. Uh, and this is all in the docs. And by the way, there's a blog post that I've got that details exactly how to replicate everything that I've done here, uh, which I'll, I'll show you briefly at the end. So the other thing I've got then is the Raspberry Pi. And I've dialed into the Raspberry Pi and you can see here the invocations. So we had the on and the off and the on and the off working there. Uh, and actually as well, if I go over to um, my um, Azure portal, then we can actually look at what the um, uh, the uh, Azure function was doing as well. So here's, here's the various invocations that have happened this morning. Uh, and we can see here, look, the state was off and the state there is off. So that's that same console logging I was just showing you in the um, uh, in, in Visual Studio Code there a minute ago. And, and really, that's almost it. Uh, but I have got one extra piece to show uh, because, you know, it's Christmas. Uh, but this is actually quite difficult to do. So um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to grab this and then I'm going to try something which is quite difficult to do. Let's see what happens. Right, let's wait a second and see if see what this does. Um, so yeah, that's that's stopped, which is good. Uh, so obviously we saw that we've got all of this lot all hooked up, um, but uh, and a Raspberry Pi is is great. I love the Raspberry Pi, massive advocate of the Raspberry Pi. Um, uh, but obviously that's that's a fair amount of processing power just to receive a call through all of this lot. So uh, let me just see if this works. Controller. Controller, turn the lights on. The light has been <laughs> turned on. And it worked. So I don't know if you can see that, but I've just turned my jumper on. <laughs> so I spent most of yesterday uh, and, and deep into last night and early this morning sewing sewable LEDs and, um, uh, uh, and conductive thread and my fingers are full of holes now because uh, I'm no seamstress, let me tell you. Um, but yeah, if I stand up, look, you can see, uh, it's sort of, you can just about see it. What I need to do is make some more holes in the um, in the fabric so it's a bit more obvious to see. Uh, but controller, turn the lights off. The light there has we go. been turned off. So I can, I can, using the percept, I can turn my um, Jim Bennett inspired ugly IoT sweater on and off. So what I've actually got in there is uh, an ESP32. Uh, but awesomely, what you can do is you can run C Sharp on uh, an ESP32 using Jose Simuez's um, uh, .NET Nano framework, which is fantastic. Uh, and there's not a great deal of code to do that because it's C sharp. It's actually quite similar to um, what we'd have uh, on the Raspberry Pi, for instance. So we have to set up the uh, the Wi-Fi uh, credentials to be able to log in log into the Wi-Fi, uh, and then we have to create uh, a way to be able to uh, connect to the IoT hub. We're cre creating a connection string manually here. That's what uh, these parts are doing. Uh, and then I've got a GPIO controller, just like I did before. Um, but I've I've got five pins that I've assigned to the various different color LEDs. Uh, and then I set whether or not it's blinking down here in the code. Oh, uh, yeah, good point. Hold on. Let me, let me do that again. <laughs> ah, the audience. Perfect. Let me just do that again. Um, so, yeah, we've got a bunch of stuff at the top here which connects the Wi-Fi. And then the IoT hub settings there. Uh, GPIO controller, and then um, yeah. I'm... Huh? It's listening to me again. Turn the lights on. The light has been turned on. Might as well have my jumper sparkly while I'm doing it, eh? Um, uh, yeah, so uh, GPIO, that word. And then I'm defining the pins for each of my individual colours of LEDs that I've got set there. Uh, and I set whether it's blinking or not. Uh, and then I always... Um, 
have a bit of debug uh, right line stuff working here. If you've actually got the ESP32 plugged in directly to the PC, then in Visual Studio, um, which I like, um, uh, you can actually do debugging live on the device, breakpoints and, and see uh, console right lines coming out, debug.right lines coming out. It's dead good, but I just wanted to use VS Code to show the code. It was easier. Uh, next up, I create a device client and I pass in the broker address, the device ID and the SAS key. So that's the address of my IoT hub, the device that I want to connect as, uh, and then uh, the key that I need uh, to authenticate with. Uh, next up, I create a GPIO controller and then I open all of those pins as outputs because we're driving LEDs. Uh, and I'm using pins 1 to 5 on the um, uh, ESP32. Uh, next, I just make sure they're all off to start with. And then we connect to the Wi-Fi uh, and then exit if we can't. Uh, and then we hook up a bunch of um, events here. So we can have the, the twin, device twin, um, which is uh, a way to be able to sync um, state between the cloud and the device. Uh, there's also a status of uh, the connection status to the IoT hub itself. Uh, and then cloud to device messages, which are just for simple information from the IoT hub down to the device. And we also hook up the control light method that you remember I showed you from that um, Raspberry Pi implementation. Uh, and then we open up the connection to Azure. And then uh, we just grab the twin. And a lot of this is demo code, by the way. So, you, um, and this is all, by the way, all of this code's in the GitHub repo too. So uh, you don't need to worry too much about um, the code. You'll all have that. Uh, and then we uh, get the reported properties and then update some reported properties. Um, and then down here, I just create some threads uh, to control the LEDs. And then I just sit and wait forever. So um, each of these threads here just blinks the LED at a random interval. Uh, it literally just you know, picks a random number and then toggles the LED on or off and then waits for that random interval. And I've got one for each of those. And then if I scroll down, we've got the connect to Wi-Fi, twin update, and status updated events. But here we've got the control light method. And at that point, we just grab that state as to whether it's on or off, exactly like we did before. Uh, and if it's on, then we set the blinking variable to be on, uh, which then kicks off all of those threads uh, to carry on doing their work. Uh, and if it's off, we just set that to off. Uh, and that's, that's about as much code as you need. I mean, it looks like there's more code there. Uh, but that's mainly just for the fact that I've got five things I'm controlling rather than one. So I think, is that still working? I'm not sure. It might have stopped. It, it kind of does that. I think my uh, I think the ESP32 uses such little power that this power bank that I've got connected to it says, oh, I'm not powering you anymore, so uh, you might as well just go to sleep. So it does that. But uh, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it. So if I go back to my slides now, um, we can scroll through past that um obviously you are watching the iot live show here uh although like i say normally i would have the fabulous maria anastasia mustaka and uh, cliff aegis along with me uh but just a special show today uh, for the festive tech calendar tell you what i'll do i'll turn my lamp back on again so you can actually see me too um i'm also a plural site author and if you wanted to upskill in iot if that was something you're interested in then myself and a few other authors have created a whole heap of training content to be able to help you pass the Microsoft AZ220 a uh, IoT Developer Certification Speciality, uh, big long name, um, but uh, this is curated content. I actually helped create the exam and I helped to create it uh, to keep it updated as well. So this is um, uh, my course particularly, but all of this course content is fantastic and tailored exactly to the content and the exam. So do go check that out. Uh, onwards from that, then uh, there's here's some links. So the um, the blog post I was talking about before, uh, which I can quickly show actually, just here. Uh, so uh, this ste steps you through the whole thing um, uh, step by step. So you don't need to worry about any of it. It will literally take you through step by step. Uh, it is worth pointing out that a bit further down here, there's a big black disclaimer box. Uh, we are working with mains over there, so uh, do bear that in mind uh, in the fact that um, it's dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. So um, uh, I can't take any responsibility uh, and all those things, but um, yeah, it, it, it's simple enough stuff, but just be careful. 
Uh, all of the code is in the GitHub repo you can see there. If you want to learn a bit more about the Percept then, uh, and its services, then those three links uh, will help you with that. Um, and then finally, if you want to get in touch with me, Twitter is nearly always the best place, so at Pete underscore codes. Um, but you can email, email, email me, if I can say the word, Pete at PJG Creations as well. So um, if you want the slides from today's event, then you can get those at that bit.ly at the bottom. Uh, so don't worry too much about those links. They're all in that. Uh, and that's all on SlideShare. So you can just download the slide deck and, and go from there. So uh, I don't know how long. What time is it now? 40 minutes. That's not too bad. I think I managed to squeeze in quite a lot in that uh, 40 minute interval. Um, I am a bit sad not to have my co-hosts with me, but uh, I see at least uh, that Maria Anastasia is in the chat there, which is lovely. Uh, and thanks so much to to everybody for coming along. And obviously, you know, if you've got any questions, just sling them in the chat, and um, I'm happy to answer them as well. Uh, oh, and uh, I just spotted up above that uh, Strader, Strader's there is subscribed as well. So thank you so much for the subscription. That's that's lovely of you. So, so there you go. So uh, I don't even know if this thing's working anymore. Controller. 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 <laughs> Turn the lights on. The light has been turned on. Mm, it, yeah, it is still working. It's just going to be difficult to see because of the light. So there you go. So um, thanks so much to everybody for, for joining. Uh, if I don't speak to you before, have a fantastic holiday season or Christmas or whatever it is that you're celebrating. Uh, and we'll catch you all soon. So thank you very much. See you soon. <laughs>